welcome to Dear Alice, a lifestyle approach to interior design. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Dear Alice. We are here with Corey Place. Hey, how's it going? And Sue Hall. Thanks for joining us, guys. Yep. Today's podcast is going to be about the business of design, which is a wild business to be in. It's, it's crazy. It really is. And that's right. Complicated. Rice. And the yeah. funny thing is, is that I feel like of all the designers out there, somehow we all do what we do very differently. Oh, for it's sure. not like, I don't know about you, but in school, they didn't teach you like, this is the business of design and this is how you should run your business. Oh, they, they just taught try. you the art of design, right? And yeah. the different types of design, commercial, residential, yeah. right? They have like little classes that tell you about like how to do purchase orders, how to do sales estimates, how to like work with vendors, things like that, mm -hmm. like internal trade things that you ne you'll need to know. But how to run a business, it's just, it's too, it's about, it's like saying like women, there's only one way to have a baby and this is how you do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, and, yeah. And you have to go to this birthing center. Like, there's just like, you can do, Think so many different ways, you mm -hmm. know, just, and a design, it's not only subjective and it's like aesthetic, but just like in the way people work, mm -hmm. how they work with people, how they work internally. It's complicated. It is yeah. complicated. And usually like in most design firms, you know, you're wearing like one person is wearing five hats because there's just so many processes that mm -hmm. you have to go through to get it done. So definitely anyway, it's complicated. It is complicated. Very complicated. And we're going to get into it today. We are going to get into it. But first, I oh. want to know from Sue and Corey, what are you watching on TV right now? How are you entertaining yourself this fall? I said, I told you guys this yes. w while we were setting up. Um, but for the first time ever, I'm watching The Office. I'm so happy for yeah, you. I'm, I'm on so season, happy. I'm Gosh, end of season it. two right now. And it's, what a gift. It really is, yeah. What a gift to get to watch <laughs> The Office for the first time. I know. It's you so just, good. That's so, it's so good. good. I know to like meet Michael Scott for the very first time, you lucky duck. And do it in 2023 where it's like. So not man, PC. I feel like all of those jokes have like a new meaning, you know? It's oh, so for good. Sure. Like, yeah. I'm not going to be with that. No. But man, is it good to revisit. So good. Um, what about you, Jess? What are you watching? Um, okay, so there's been a writer's strike that's been going on. Mm. We're recording this a little bit early. And so I feel like things that we would normally be excited to watch new. There's not anything new. So I find that this conversation keeps coming up and I'm seeing on people's Instagram, like, what are you guys watching right now? How are you entertaining uh -huh. yourself? And so um, I'm rewatching um, Schitt's Creek. Love that. I think it's my third time watching it through. And so I good. laugh so hard every night right before I go to sleep. And I have to say there's like some sort of medicine to just being able to just laugh at the end of your day. Mm -hmm. And it's so outrageously funny. And one of the, um, I used to think like when, when people are getting into it, like you might not get it at first, just like maybe start in the fourth season and then go back and watch the first and see how it gets started or whatever. And then Sue had said, no, they have to start in the first because it's 100%. when Moira screams the most. <laughs> Moira's the mom. And it's, it's so funny. So when I just started rewatching it, sure enough, what was I watching for? I was watching for all the screaming. Moira does. <laughs> Sue, do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so oh, good. So, so funny. funny. It's so funny. And so if you go and you watch and you're waiting to hear the screams, now I hear she's them. Just like a million like wigs in her hand and she's just like <laughs> panicked and just like the world is like falling apart and it's yeah. so funny. It's, it's so funny. So funny. And Adam and I are just dying laughing. I laugh way harder. I'm like a laugh out loud person and mm -hmm. It's like almost a scream. And then Adam will be like, wait, did you see this? Because I'll like run out to get something for the dog and come back in. And mm -hmm. and and then he'll rewind it. And sure enough, it's like Moira screaming because uh -huh. he knows that that's become the funniest. And I see Sue while she's doing it. And it's like <laughs> extra funny. So anyway, Aww. Schitt's Creek, The Office. What are you watching Aww. right now, Sue? Guys, I'm an anomaly here um, because I like and probably just like because I've hitched my toe with Tom, my husband. And, uh -huh. and I think we both like really intense shows like just like intense human experience just like to wind down at it, the end of the I day know, with just something like really, really intense something heavy <laughs> it's like a lot of weight on me like a weighted blanket is like with the kind of the kind of shows i watch but i think it's something about just like the survival of the human spirit like what what and how it deals with certain situations uh -huh. and how they crawl out of it because it's yeah. a crawl yeah i feel like these are like crawling situations and so um probably the one that i like loved the most recently i'm gonna like list three sh shows right here and they're all kind of heavy but the bear i loved 
Mm-hmm. There's two seasons of it. Is one and of these your honor? What? Your honor. Your honor? No. no. Okay. Sorry. Keep oh, going. <laughs> yeah. Tune in. Is it heavy? Write it down because you'll love it. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't watch it. That is insane. <laughs> <laughs> if we can't watch it, <laughs> Suze is going to love it. <laughs> yeah, it's, that one's so I'm intense. Like, Provo Grandma, my mom, just don't judge me. Anyway, but the bear, I just thought it was so good. And That's the one with the, the Chicago. Yeah. Beef, and just like he's And aren't they really a, dr- a drug runner or something? Don't they sell drugs out the back of it? or No. no. Well, there's some of that. But okay. it's not like the premise. Anyway, but like I love watching things about like creation, like beautiful food. Yeah. I love it. And he creates beautiful food, but it's just in like really dire situations. And how like do you get from this to trying to achieve greatness amidst mm. adversity? Yeah. And like the writing is so good mm. in The Bear and the music, the soundtrack of The Bear. I both season that. one and season two is great. I'm shazamming things. I'm like, oh my gosh, I haven't heard this since like 1996. Um, I'm so excited. I, I really, really love it. And the characters, you just become so endeared to. Even, like, if they've done crummy things, you know that they're just trying their hardest, you know, like, in this really shitty situation. Yeah. But I love the bear. Um, Watch Ozark, Jason Bateman. That really is good. way good. Really good. Really sad, though, because, like, at the end, you're just like, gosh, these people are terrible. Mm. But, like, you're fi- you had, <laughs> they had a fighting chance at the beginning, but then just, like, again, admits all these, like, really terrible situations. Like, w- And then you ask yourself, how would I, how would I work through that? If yeah. I was in that situation, I don't know. Yeah. I just love something heavy. Yeah. I just really do. Just like, just yeah. put Did a cork in me and third? just screw. Oh, oh and the then what's one, Okay. This is the other one that like, we're trying to just like, this feels like a little bit like an army crawl because I think they digressed, um, was Goliath. I don't know if anybody, probably nobody, Billy Bob Thornton. I have not heard of it. Anyway, Tom found it. There's four seasons. We're on season four, just trying to like whip through it. And it like kind of went like some weird directions. Anyway. But it's about, again, this this lawyer who's had some hard knocks, really successful. Mm-hmm. He's had some hard knocks, um, but he knows a lot of people, and he has a lot of grit, and he has a lot of integrity. That he's trying to, like, you know, I mean, there's just, like, these big companies, you know, Big Farm, or, you know, mm-hmm. these big, you know, that. And that's, I, I love a lawyer show, too. I think mm-hmm. it's really fun to see someone, like, litigate their way, you know, to truth or justice or, you know, and just how both are at fault. But, like, which one's more at fault? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and which one, you know. Anyway. So that's been interesting. And his like cast member, the one who plays Patty, is so funny. She's really witty. So there is some humor in there, or just like some quick wit and street smart mm-hmm. that I really enjoy. So awesome. Sorry, You're those on- are great. There's a deep dive. Don't apologize. Yeah. Uh-huh. Your honor is Brian Cranston. He's a okay. judge. Oh and yeah, you're gonna love it. Yeah, love it. it's on. It's <laughs> so <justice>. intense. <laughs> it's so intense. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Well, next one after season four of Goliath. There you go. Yes. Oh. Okay, you guys, today's okay. episode started with a question from one of you. So thank you so much for Send sending them. your questions. They always inspire podcasts or, or at least one of our 20 questions. Um, in this case, Izzy Griggs, you wrote in and um, uh, Izzy says, hello there. My name is Izzy. And last summer I discovered Dear Alice podcast with the desire to continue learning about the design world outside of school. Then I followed Alice Lane Interiors on Instagram and fell in love with your design approach. I'm starting to, um, I, I'm about to start my senior year at University of Kentucky, and I'm in a major need of advice. I would love to hear about your guys' experiences after finishing with a design degree and any advice that you have for fresh meat, LOL. What characteristics of designers stand out to you? This is such a good question, Izzy. Oh. Uh, and kudos for getting through um, almost your whole degree. Kentucky, that's awesome. That is awesome. Very and thank cool. you for the compliments and for following along. So fun. Um, okay, let's talk about um, what you did right after design school and any great advice yeah. that we could give Izzy. This comes at a really good time, I think, too, with like fall. Because like every, even now, and I'm like, well, you know, 15 plus years out of school. Mm-hmm. And still to this day when like fall happens, I'm like, I got to get up to Logan. I yeah. have to go through Sardine Canyon. Logan is where Utah State is, and that's where like Jess and I both went, and a lot of, a lot of Alice Lane employees um, went and did their design program. And I just like I love this time of year because I think of school, and I I'm like, what a joy for you, Izzy, to be in school right now, mm-hmm. and to be finishing up because like in school, it's like playland. <laughs> yeah, it's subjective. Like I mean, like I remember like in school, like actually this is terrible. 
you would never hire me if I did this now. Um, I would like make the furniture blocks the way I wanted them to, so I could fit all the things I wanted to, because I wanted the drawing <laughs> to be better, you know. Or just I'm like, I feel like cool though today, like we could shrink a furniture block and then look for a piece that size yeah, just to get the space money, right? But yeah. Then, but then I just like made my own. Oh, well, you know what? It was a student project. Is a furniture Weirdo. block yeah. like? In CAD, like this mm-hmm. is the sofa yeah. that you would make it to fit and that. Like room. A three, oh, okay. Yeah, in a 3D program, like you'd extrude something. Like anyway. normally we would look up a sofa from Hickory Chair and the, and the dimensions are 87 by 42. Mm-hmm. Suzanne yeah, would say, I really need a sofa that's 60 inch by 36. So she would squish it. And it would just, and it would work for her floor plan. on there and it'll be fine, but it'll yeah. look better. She would custom Great. make it yeah. is yeah. what yeah. she's so saying. So, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so school's really fun. Izzy, uh-huh. excited for you. I will say, like, when you graduate, um, what I did is I came back to Utah. I did, I did, I had some neat experiences and cool internships. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think too, even like as you're graduating, um, don't limit yourself to like where you're at. Mm -hmm. For your internship. For for your internship. Or for school as well. For for school, your Mm -hmm. internship, your after, like, if you have someone or somewhere that you want to go, do it. Like, and if you are, have the ability to go, do it. I went to Scotland for an internship, and it was life-changing. Mm-hmm. I loved it so much, and I did an internship in Alabama for a magazine. And, like, it changed the trajectory of my life and exposed me to things that I wanted, that I knew, like, I wanted to be around. So did all these internships, went back, graduated from school, and at that point, I'd been at the Mac for Southern Accents. I'd been working for that, and I realized just the importance of publishing. Mm-hmm. And the importance of like working for a firm that had been published, and so that was kind of like high on my ticket. So I'm Suzanne. Post graduation is googling to see who's been published in Arc Digest in Utah, and I found one up in Park City, and I was just like, cool, I'll go. That can be my first job out of school. I'll go. I'll go work for her. And my first job, um, and it's not necessarily that I like respected their s- aesthetic. And this is again, this is circa 2005. So. Utah had a very specific, like, really heavy style that what I didn't really, like, resonate with, but I knew that there was stuff to learn, mm-hmm. you know, from a published firm. You guys remember the Tuscan era? Or very European, very brown, very heavy iron railings, yeah. um, knockdown walls, um, lots of texture, heavy, heavy decorating. That was that was the timestamp. Sorry, yeah. continue. No, totally. Yeah. Anyway, so I go and I work for this gal that, anyway, I didn't really see eye to eye I just did um hand drafting like I knew CAD you know to do all that but she still did hand drafting and there were beautiful renderings and elevations and we'd shade everything and like and I love to draw so like that was something an asset that I had Mm -hmm. I'm like I could use this I could help her and then I could learn stuff in return right and so I worked for her for about gosh maybe three no probably four months like during the summer and I'd drive up to Park City every day and I'd and I'd do From elevations Provo. for her. Mm, yeah. Crazy. Yep, I'd just drive my little Jeep that had no air conditioning and then I'd drive home and I would jump into Deer Creek because it was so hot in that tin box. And and the things that I learned from her is that I didn't align with her ethics. I didn't like her, but um I want I knew that I wanted to like continue like to go somewhere where they were published. So Anyway, that was just, like, one pit stop, and I don't regret it because I learned a lot as far as, like, hand drafting and just, like, the aesthetic presentation that you show to a client. Um, so, and then from there, like, I had another couple other pit stops. I did my own thing for a little bit. I worked for a firm in downtown. We worked on a lot of projects in Park City. And in every single one of those jobs, like, it gave me just, like, more, um, it gave me more experience. It gave me more, like, time to work with design teams it gave like you're learning constantly about the process of design which as we said before Mm -hmm. is really complicated and different every at each one of these places it was it was completely different yeah having to relearn it so I learned about all those things but ultimately I learned that I wanted to work with somebody that I enjoyed working with and that like I aligned with like not only aesthetically but ethically and that I had a good time with um because Yes, you're going to, like, put all this stuff that you learned in school, and you're, you want to create beautiful spaces, right? Mm-hmm. That's what you're graduating in. But now, like, who do you want to align yourself with? And I and I wish at the time, like, uh, you're just kind of like, you're a freshman. Mm-hmm. You know, you graduate you're as a senior, and then you become a freshman all over again. Mm-hmm. And so you just kind of have to, like, 
again, cut your teeth. So I would say now if I were to graduate tomorrow, um, I think there's probably a lot more opportunity here in Utah than there was when I graduated. So I don't know if that's the same in Kentucky or wherever you want to go or if you have the ability to move where you want to go. You want to come to Utah? Come to Utah. Mm -hmm. um, but I would like find a firm that you believe in, that you like you're obsessed with. And go work for them. One cool thing about like where I went to school is that our professors really challenged us for our internship to go like find your like look at eighty one hundred, go to one of them. You know, like it's not unreachable. You should go somewhere like and go to someone that you absolutely respect and that you you'll enjoy the process just because you enjoy the end product so much, mm -hmm. right? And you know that they know how to get there. Yeah. Did you and ever so, hear of anyone like? You know how they say, like, don't meet your heroes type of thing? Like, don't meet your heroes? Like, oh, yeah. I've, like, I haven't heard that, but I, I've, I've I get that. it. But yeah. 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 Like, where you're like, oh my gosh, like, this is like what I want to do and who Tainted. I want to And then you go there and you're like, oh, it's not what I envisioned it to be. Yeah. Um, I don't know. To that, I, I would say that you, you do see how human people are. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, again, just on social media, everything is shown with a beautiful filter on it, but re rarely do you get to see the behind the scenes. And and that's what you need to know to understand where you want to land. Yeah. You ha you'll, you'll get to know the behind the scenes and like what the firm is really about, how much they support their employees, how much they care about their clients. You know, again, the ethics thing mm -hmm. is so, I think is, so, is really critical because honestly, I worked for several women and I just like, I didn't align with them. And I was just like, especially after that first job, I'm like, I would see how, you know, and I will say back then and probably still in some situations this happens now, um, you really had like as a woman in business and in design working like with builders in a male dominant trades, right? Yeah. Um, they had to be kind of authoritative to get what they want, which can often come off being you know a bitch you know or just like two and that was frowned upon so I can see like how she probably got there to that point um but she just made it miserable to work for miserable just trying to demand respect so yeah or be, something. yeah be sympathetic to like where they're coming from but is it who you want to be with you know at the end of the day and and until like so I, I worked for several firms and then I met Jess who actually she was in advertising she to you know and so I think that that's why the fresh perspective was so, I was so drawn to, cause I was just like, oh, finally <laughs> someone I, like, I, it was just, just didn't feel like work. You know, we talked about that and like how we all met and, and we said it on here before, but, um, just getting to a place where you know yourself, Izzy, and you know what you stand for, you know what you want to put out in the world and you know who you want to learn it from, that's where you go. Yeah. That's where you apply. Yeah. And, you know, if you don't get that job, send them another email, a follow-up email, and be like, I'll do anything. Mm -hmm. And I will say to your other question mm -hmm. of, like, what characteristics of designers stand out to you, like, in the hiring process? Mm -hmm. The ones that I feel like the shooting stars that have come here, and some of them aren't here anymore because, like, they had greater things to do, and I completely support them, are the ones that are just like, give me anything. Mm -hmm. we, had, we had one designer who I dearly love, and he was just like, he had a beautiful mind. And I remember when he first started working here, he, he was just like, give me anything. Mm -hmm. I'll do whatever. He's like, I don't care if it's billable. Just yeah. give me anything. Just I just want to do it all. Try it I all. I want to learn. And yeah. Just like, and he grew the fastest. Yeah. Because he it's was willing, attitude. he was willing to, to like, just get in there and help with anything, regardless, packaging, pricing, you know, cleaning up samples, ordering samples, cleaning the library, whatever it is, just be so anxiously engaged. Mm -hmm. And they'll, they'll trust you, Yeah, you know, if you do a great job. So. Because there's nothing worse than being bored, you oh, know. Yeah. Your days go by so long. Your thought, your brain starts to make up stories. You, do you know mm, what I mean? Yeah. Like you start to horribleize. And so I feel like, I mean, even some advice giving, you know, my daughter as she starts college was just like, stay busy. If you have extra time, get a part-time job. Because busy people attract great things and you can... You can meet more people, you're higher energy, you learn how to prioritize time. But when you don't have enough to do, that's when 
that's when bad thoughts start to kick in. Yeah. And mm-hmm. do you know what I mean? And, totally. and, and you're not being challenged. And yeah. so you'll look back like on like six months and you'll be like, man, why am I not feeling fulfilled? Totally. What did you know? I do? Yeah, like, yeah. And it's like, oh, I'm not like, mm-hmm. I'm not stretching myself. Totally. I'm not and, growing. And I can't think of any employer, Izzy, that you're going to go work at or any firm that you're going to intern at or anything that wouldn't be obsessed with you if you said, give me anything, give me more to do. That's only going to take me a half hour. What else do you want after that? Or I'm going to stop back in, but give me more, you know, they'd mm-hmm. be like, I need to hire you because you do the work of two people, you know? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, just be like really, really engaged and take on things and complete tasks. You're going to learn so much more. They're going to learn how to trust you and you'll just be invaluable to them. I also think a great attitude when I, Think about some of the interviews we've sat in. Mm -hmm. It's funny, but like the thing that stands out the most isn't the most professional person. It's the person that is just like pure love of the game. Yeah. Yeah. And you just feel their energy and you're like, this is contagious. This is going to be great for our design center. They're going to flourish on any team. And as a senior designer down the road, several years forward, people are going to love being presented to that by that passionate person. So I would say be passionate as you're um, interviewing and, you know, as you're working with people, because that's what you're buying off on. You can't see your finished house. I mean, maybe with AI in the future, you're going to be able to see it before it's done. But um, you're really going to, you're really going to be sold on their energy and, and their, um, obviously their, their great taste, other projects, good portfolio, but it's, it's the love of the game that stands out the most to me anyway, when I'm hiring yeah, and don't expect, Izzy, when you're, like, putting your portfolio in front of somebody, like, we kn- like we can see great projects, but we know, like, that's this is your starting point, is, yeah. like, I just called you Iz. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're tight. Besties now, right? You're homies. <laughs> anyway, but just, I don't know, like, we we know that as employers, too, that, like, when we're looking at something, you're just like, this is, like, this is only the beginning. Mm-hmm. Like, do they have the skill set? Do they have the attitude? And also... Right. Do they have the gratitude? Because I do think yeah. that those with a good attitude are also grateful, mm-hmm. you know, and when you're grateful, I feel like you're, you're anxiously engaged, yeah. you're not grateful. You're like, oh, lucky you, you ha- you get me, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. but those that are grateful, they, they work better. They yeah. work better with other people. They're humble mm-hmm. and they learn faster. Yeah. If you can be humble, you'll learn a lot faster. You'll get to the finish line. Definitely. On and on any project you're working on a lot quicker mm-hmm. when you're gra- grateful. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's great. A um, few talking points that we have here. In yeah. talking about the business of design, there's a lot of ways to skin a cat. Mm-hmm. Some people today are just design firms and they don't have a furniture store. When we first started in the business, if you wanted to carry a big furniture line, you had to be a, what they call a stocking dealer, which meant... You had a furniture store, you could carry their furniture. Mm -hmm. If you were a designer, they would sell you that wholesale furniture at a higher cost called designer's cost. And then they would get it reduced just a certain percentage. So the best way to buy furniture to get the best price on it was having a retail store. And we did start as a retail store and then quickly within a month or two made the design service available. And um, so we are a design firm. We also have a showroom. We also have a free design service for people that just want help with their furnishings. We also develop our own product. Mm -hmm. We have an online store. We've got a podcast and we've got a massive warehousing and logistics side of our business. It's like 40,000 square feet. So we have definitely taken the hard road and nobody needs needs to do it like this. We've slowly become this like spider with eight different legs moving slowly (laughs) through, through the design um, sphere. And it's really wonderful to have full appreciation for the whole, whole part of it. But today, in fact, talking to a lot of different vendors, um, most of their business now is coming from designers and there's less and less furniture stores today because there's so many online stores. And so there's not a lot of people that are doing it the old dinosaur way. Like we're doing it with the showroom. I am so glad we have the showroom. I think it makes us better designers in the end. And one thing they don't teach you in school is how to style, at least not at ours. They teach you all this other huge piece of how to design, but like the finessing and the lifestyling and, and really, you know, the connections with clients and should start a school of design layers. I know. I think it should be called finishing school school. where we teach them like how to style, you know, and get that, that real cool look. And you have to know how to do that. If you have a showroom, 
because it needs to just be really beautiful. And we have an extra high standard, I feel like, of what of what a showroom should look like. It doesn't necessarily feel like a showroom. It feels like a home. Yeah. Like the lifestyle. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So anyway, we're definitely doing it the hard things. But there is a business to design and that's one of the things that we wanted to really break down in this podcast. Because I think so many people here are they love design and they've maybe even considered going into design or maybe you're a designer yourself that's watching. So let's get into yeah, it. I know. Okay. All right. Where are we again? There's so many different things. Um, well, we have everyone wears a lot of hats. Yes. And I think that's true in a lot of design firms, yeah. even if they don't have a store. Yeah, usually like I, in the other firms that I worked for and even those have Greg grown, I'm sure that their models have changed. But I feel like the, you might have a project manager, like one for all your projects. And that project manager is probably doing the ordering, mm -hmm. do following up on claims, setting up deliveries. Like there's so many things. If you think about like building a house and like getting all the design done, communicating all that to a builder mm -hmm. to actually like erect and like make this home. But then like you're getting furniture, you're pitching furniture, you're getting samples to dress all this furniture. Then you are ordering all the furniture to get to, you know, maybe a different state. You're get contacting a receiving warehouse. You're, you know, someone has to follow all those balls. Yeah. You know, then, like, everyone's, the warehouse is getting all the furniture. Then is someone checking for claims before we fly out there or go to the install to then, like, install it. What about accessories? Shoot, I need to, like, do that last layer that the client wanted because they want this, like, finished product. Or I want to take pictures of it, so I need a photographer now. Yeah. After I style it, hopefully I have some styling. And then we want to submit this to publishing. How does that work? Mm -hmm. There are so many different things. And then, like, let's market it. Should yeah. we market it? <laughs> Maybe we should get a marketing. <laughs> like, who's our social media gal? You know, like, yeah. so even within, like, all the design process, there is a spot for you. Like, reg like if you're interested in design, there's a place for you Yes. in the process. You yes. know, even, even if you were just an enthusiast and you didn't go to school, there is a place for you to be involved in the design process. If you're watching this and you're like, my kids are gone, I'm bored, I need a hobby, mm -hmm. and you love design, there, and, but you're really good at logistics, or you can crank out an Excel spreadsheet, yeah. there's a space for you in the design field. Mm -hmm. I did not go to design school, and I had no. zero experience in check interiors you, or Check design. you out, VP of yeah. product development. Exactly. Come on. Yeah. You can be me one day. I know. But, <laughs> but again, it's like the cure. It's the, it's the curious cat, right? Like uh -huh. it's the one that like really is just hungry for it and just like doesn't waste any time. Mm -hmm. So Izzy, just like be so anxiously engaged. Like if you, I if you, that. and I feel like we get that all the time when someone asks like, what do you do for a living? I'm like, I'm a designer. And they're like, oh, I wanted to do that. Do that. You should do it. Mm -hmm. There's, there's a place for you. If you're, if you have a, a superpower, I guarantee you, like, there's some way to use you in this, like, really long, hard, lengthy, gorgeous process. I fully agree. And passion takes you a really long way. Um, mm -hmm. And then everything's figure outable, and, and hopefully you're intuitive, and you have a lot of common sense, and the design industry needs people like that. Yeah. So, And it is all for the love of the game, because we are all doing it for that final image. Yeah. We are all, like, that's what we, like, honestly, like, we share images at night, of either past projects, projects of other designers that we're celebrating, or, you know, just anything. You're like, did you see what they did there? Do you see, like, that tile pattern? Oh, my gosh. Like, all the things. Do you see that grout? That was a bad choice. Like, let's correct that. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's a constant thing just for this, like, final image, you know, that's, like, book worthy. That's what we're fighting for, this whole lengthy process. Yeah. Obviously, for the client to live in a beautiful home mm -hmm. and to be happy and to, like, live their lives. But for us as a professional, mm -hmm. we want the picture. Yeah. We want to see that shot. For sure. So, anyway, that's the I goal. would say um, another piece where there's a really great place in the industry to be a part of it. Um, I, I know at Utah State, there's a whole lot of kids that go into the program, and then they cut all of them, but maybe 15 or 20 that make it into the program. But there's other places for those kids that get cut. And one of the, one of the things that they offer is you can be... They cut that program. They don't do it anymore. They when, used when to I have was a when I was when I was there, but I think that this you go into a sales and marketing yeah. degree. Oh, sorry. If, if you, yeah. So, so there's you have a sales like and marketing studio. portion yeah, for interior design. Yeah. yeah. You have design studio and that's where you're actually like in CAD land and stuff. And I think a lot of a lot of programs only take a certain amount. But there's online programs too that you can do. Mm -hmm. Um but if you don't want to do that and you're hell of a salesman. You should go into sales and marketing because design reps, mm -hmm. like furniture reps, that is a whole other facet of design that's very lucrative, I think. Yeah, so. I think probably more lucrative than being a designer, depending on yeah. 
where you land. Um, but the, if they get a couple of really great lines, um, I think they make a really lovely living. And, what, and you're still yeah. surrounded by designers. You're helping designers, supporting them, getting their furniture. That market, you're you go to all of the markets. You're showing things around, and um, you're you know you're on the forefront of the industry. You're seeing what's coming. You're educating designers on what's new, what's next, the sit, the fill, the pitch, the all of the things like that. So you're still in it, but it's just a different way and you're supporting them through sales. And um, I think that's another really great worthy option. Yeah. yeah. So again, just yeah. like you we talked about, like finding a firm or somewhere that you want to that work for, that you admire. If there's a brand or a lifestyle that you're just like, I dig the way they mm-hmm. they design. I want to be a part of that. Get your head in there. Like get, figure it out. And I bet if you're anxious enough, like you'll you can climb your way up. Definitely. So yeah, that's yeah. great. We have down here, where will you be the most satisfied? And mm-hmm. I think satisfaction, you know, that kind of stems from what you were saying, mm-hmm. Sue, earlier that you tried a few on and it wasn't quite the right fit. Yeah. At the end of the day, you want to find yourself in a, in a job where it's, it's satisfying to you to be able to do that work and push it forward. And there's, like we said, a lot of different arms to do it in, but, but really try and find yourself somewhere that is satisfying to you on some level because that's going to give you the gas in your tank and the passion to make you extra good at what you're doing. So true. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, at the end of the day, we're all, we're all working. We all have lives after work, but like it's mm-hmm. a large, it's a large majority of the hours of our lives that we spend working, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? So who are you working with? Do you like them? Do you respect them? Do you like what you're doing? Uh-huh. Do you like who you're working? Like not only your employer, but the people you're servicing. Like does that, I think that there's a lot of motivation that comes from the humans that we work with. So do you like in design, do you like humans? There's, I mean, there's, we've talked about this a little bit before. There's some people that are people facing, Mm -hmm. you know, that you're just like, okay, they are, they're a light and they're electric. And then there's some people that aren't as comfortable getting in front of people or they don't like selling stuff. And, and we're selling a lifestyle. We're selling something we believe in. So Mm -hmm. oftentimes we don't think of it as a sales job, but at the end of the day, we're trying to make this thing come to life, which includes sales. Mm -hmm. And so you do have to like be okay. Like if you want to be like in front of people, you have to be okay with public speaking. You have Mm -hmm. to be okay. Like trying to, trying to convince someone that like, this is the right direction based off of your expert knowledge. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Where am I going with this? But yeah. Also also say is that like the people you work with, you know, respect the firm that you're with. And I think, yeah. Yeah. And just be anxious, yeah. anxious to learn and anxious to get the ball where it needs to go. Yep. We have a note down here about self-evaluation, knowing your strengths and weaknesses. That's good. This is really important. I know one of the questions that we ask a lot when we're interviewing is, um, what's your superpower? Mm-hmm. I think being really self-aware and it will help you get into the right pocket within design Um, Because you'll really know what you're good at. And like we said, there's several hats that you can wear. But if you know going into it, exactly like I have these superpowers and I'm really wanting to work on this. I've had, you know, people come to me and say, I really want to work on my styling. And we're like, great, let's put you on the floor and let's really have you style a couple of days Mm -hmm. a week so that you can really sharpen your tool. Um, So besides your strengths and weakness, also like what is it that you want to get better at? Because Mm -hmm. within design, yeah you can have that opportunity to, to strengthen something. That's probably true of all fields where you're like, so many different, where you're like cross train me, right? Like Mm. I'm good on tires, but I want to be good in the engine. So can I do that sometimes too? Or, you know, whatever your job is. Um, I think it's probably the same for a lot of fields, but, um, I think that self-evaluation, like really being clear about what you're good at, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses and sharing that with your manager and also sharing where you want to go is a great thing in any, in any job. Yep. And you'll become an asset. Yeah, I think because of those things. I mean, obviously, that's the reason you guys ask the question, but it also Mm -hmm. helps the person that's interviewing you being like, oh, I could plug them in here. And if they can visualize you being, you know what I mean? Like where, where you could be in their company, probably getting that job. Yeah. Yeah. Every single designer that we have is good at different things. Like not one is alike. And that's the way we want it. We Mm -hmm. want, we want a really broad array of tools in our tool belt. You know, that can like help this like engine go. And it makes it a lot more dynamic because we have clients with different tastes and different values or whatever. And we have a place for any of them, mm-hmm. you know, because we have girls that like are really great at traditional and like a romantic feeling. We have ones that are a little bit more, you know, like 
pared down, but like really edited, have more masculine taste or, you know, so there's, there's so many different clients that come through and we have a place for all of them, which is really a cool, yeah. it's a cool thing to have. It's cool. Um, attach yourself to people you admire and respect. I think mm. we touched on that a little yeah. bit, but just still such a great point. And then the last point we wanted to make was that you must be passionate and able to exude mm-hmm. the passion and be confident in your style. Ooh, okay. I think this, you you mentioned this too when you like, you um, interviewed with Adam. Mm-hmm. That he liked your style. You know, again, yeah. you didn't have a design background, mm-hmm. but you had style. Mm-hmm. And Adam like made note and he's just like, I like to style. I think that's going to like, I think that's something. You yeah. know, in addition to your other qualifications and whatnot. He's, it, what, what he told me was like, yeah, it's like, he's very unique. And I was, mm-hmm. I had never thought that before. I kind of just like. You're you. I, yeah. I just like kind of, yeah, just being me. And uh, so I thought that was cool. That was like one of the best compliments I've mm-hmm. ever gotten. Cause I, not that I try necessarily too hard to be unique, but mm-hmm. it's cool that. Yeah. That someone know, noticed that about you. Yeah. 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 And I, th- and I think, you know, back to Anna Wintour, you know, we've talked about this before, but she's not looking for the girl dressed all in all luxury. She's looking for the one that, like, was creative about how she put herself together. Yeah. I think that goes a long way. Mm-hmm. Like, someone that's creative and scrappy and, like, can self-identify, like, oh, they have an opinion. Yeah. And I like that, mm-hmm. you know. And I think we're, th- like, we look for the same things. Like, I'd ra- really rather have someone that has an opinion. Yes. You know, because then like if they know themselves so well, then that means they're going to be able to look at a client, Mm -hmm. understand how they're dressing, understand what they're asking for, and be able to identify that and create something for that person. Mm -hmm. That all makes sense? 100%. Yeah, Yeah. I totally agree. They've got that point of view, and they respect that other people do as well, and that they're looking to draw that out in their home so that they can tell their story because they know how to do it. Yeah. Some people don't know how to do it. And they're like, yeah. I don't know. Am I white or white? And you're like, are we really choosing a color of white? You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. let's figure out who you really are. Well, yeah. I remember like being in school. And, and again, you probably, you have this like 20 kids that are probably just like, like fresh out of, out of high school trying to figure out who they are. And they would talk about design demeanor and you had to have de- like design demeanor. And to me, that was like a J crew wool gabardine suit. So, you know what I wore on my internship? Every day, like a wool gabardine J. Crew suit, and I like uh-huh. look back at those. I'm like, I was trying so hard to uh-huh. be professional, you know. And <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, oh, I give that girl some like, uh-huh. bit. and I and you know, you try to express it, but yeah, I think this is really great permission to give designers like express yourself. Yeah, you know, know who you're presenting to. Like, don't disrespect the firm, mm-hmm. you know, and the like what what they stand for, you know. Um, dress the part, but do it your way. Yeah, you know. So yeah, I would say that too, as you're going out into the, into the business world, Izzy. Yes, that's very good. I hope this has been helpful, Izzy. We love your question. Thank you for listening and following along. And I hope this helps some of you that Mm -hmm. have interest in being in the design field, or maybe you already are, you probably have something to add that we missed. Yes. I was going to say, we always say confidence is everything. Yes. Be confident. Like again, like know what you're going in with and like what you can offer. Um, be confident, but also like be so confident that you're humble enough yeah, to like tell them what you want, you know, to learn. Cause I think that shows that you're, yeah, that engaged. self-evaluation yeah. thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Confidence is everything. And so is energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So even if you show up in that wool gabardine suit and you're a little bit yeah. nervous <laughs> and you're not quite looking like yourself mm-hmm. cause you're wearing a no. suit. Um, I still think show up with that energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because that's what people are going to hire you on. Yep. Yeah. That's, That's what why I you think. hired me, right? I didn't even remember the suit, but I remember your yeah, energy, I and I really that, liked I, you. I got, I got my wiggles out at that point. You quit wearing the you suit? Were, yeah, for sure. I was well, like, should yeah. We should bring that back again. I know, but I was fun. wearing three watches. That's right. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> but that's but that's you showing up as the style I star know, you and are. That, and that, those are all my grandma's watches. So yeah. Small, but yeah. Yeah. It's cute. Yeah. That's what I like about you. <laughs> yeah. You guys, yeah, thanks for together. listening. Um, if you have any <laughs> questions, please send them to Dear Alice at alicelanehome.com. I said that really fast. <laughs> Dear <laughs> Alice <laughs> at alicelanehome.com. We would love to be able to read your question here and do a podcast on it. Thanks so much. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for listening. If you like our show, please leave a five-star rating.